So what just happened with rates? I mean, we started out this morning with the 10-year Treasury yield just under 4%, and now it's at 3.68. I mean, that's kind of a big deal. With it, the 30-year fixed and mortgage interest rates are coming down slightly. But what it's absolutely showing us is where the ceiling is for getting those higher interest rates. We're having a really hard time breaking that 4% on the 10-year Treasury yield. And what made all of this happen and showed us where the ceiling is? Well, we got some good news mixed in with some bad news, but all of it helped our bonds. Let's start back with the story on Wednesday. So the ADP payroll numbers came out showing that 242,000 jobs were created. Now that shows the signs of a strong economy. But on the flip side of that, the wages or the hourly average earnings slowed down. They did not increase as much as expected. So that growth rate is slowing. That growth rate is the wage spiral that Fed Chair Powell has been warning against that we do not want wages to continue to increase, causing businesses to have to increase the prices, causing those prices, the things that the consumers pay, and on and on and on, hence the wage spiral. Well, wages didn't increase nearly as much as expected, so that was really good news. Then jobless claims came up, and they rose faster than they had in the last five months. That's a big deal. Now, I don't celebrate people losing their jobs, but it also means that businesses are having to shed some employees and prices will come down because of that. Again, pro-inflation coming down. Then we got the news of Silicon Valley Bank. Now, they had to, with these quick rises in the Fed rate, they had to sell off their bonds. And with that, they took a severe loss. So they stopped trading. Well, this morning, we just find out that the federal government came in and took over the Silicon Valley Bank. Again, I don't love the news, but the reason what it's doing is it's giving warning to Powell that says, whoa, you keep talking about raising the Fed rate higher for longer. And now you threw in the word faster. Faster is breaking the bank. Now, I don't have any worry that this is going to ripple into the, the larger banks or even be a mass movement, but it is showing warnings that we cannot keep raising the Fed rate this fast. And we know we've got a Fed meeting coming up later this month where it had been expected that they were going to raise the Fed rate a quarter. And then all of a sudden, because the economy is so strong, they said, you know what, we're going to go in faster. We're going to go a half a point. Well, that's going to have to be second guessed at this point. And slowing that down is going to help give our market stability. And then today, we saw unemployment move from 3.4, which we know was the lowest since 1969, up to 3.6. Again, do you want to celebrate unemployment? But I do want to celebrate that it's ticking up, giving pause to Powell saying we might have a restriction or at least a limit to how strong the labor market really is. And as that softens and as prices come down and inflation is controlled, we are going to see mortgage rates come down. So you package all that news together and this week gave us a lot of volatility, but it ended up volatility in our favor. What does that mean? That means this weekend is a great weekend for buyers to get out and maybe get a little bit more money on what they qualify for. More news coming on Tuesday with the CPI inflation report. Well, keep, stay tuned.